Hi, everybody. Pastor Joe Persh with you, as always, for our Midweek Pastors Connection, going through the names of God and drawing encouragement from each and every one. Last week, we talked about the name of God that's unconsciously most familiar to Christians, and that's Father. This week, we're going to talk about the name of God that's most consciously on the minds and hearts of Jewish people, and that would be the name Adonai. Or master. In fact, if you want to get a taste for that, uh, lately I've been going and watching on online on YouTube and other places messianic worship from Jerusalem. Jewish people, mostly young people, who've come to believe in Jesus Yeshua as the Messiah. They become born again, and they have put together some of the most wonderful worship. It's just life changing to watch. It can't get enough. And many of their songs are directly taken from the Psalms of the Old Testament. And so you hear Adonai, Master, constantly woven through these modern Jewish renditions of the ancient Jewish praises. Check it out on YouTube, Messianic Worship, You Will Be Blessed. As I watch it, I see how often this word occurs, and I know it's the favorite name in the Jewish tongue for God. So, as always, we'll take a look at three things to teach you a little something you can walk away with today and that will minister to your heart. Number one, what does this name of God mean? Adonai. Well, it's Hebrew for the word Lord in the sense of master, owner, in in the sense of mastery in a master-slave relationship, to be honest with you. It's a name of authority that we come under in our relationship with God. Adon is the actual Hebrew word in the singular for a master or a owner. But in in the Hebrew Bible and in the the praise language of the Old Testament, it's found in the plural, Adonai. So you have a plural title for one God. I wonder if that's not another example of how the Hebrew in the Old Testament gives us a silent reflection that God is three in one. Therefore, it's perfectly natural to address a three-in-one God with a plural name. Adonai, masters. Adonai, lords. Interesting, can't prove it, but it came across my mind in my study today. Thought I'd bless you with it. Where do you find it in your Bible? Well, uh, you can see in your English translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, when you see L and then lowercase o-r-d, that's the rendering of Adonai, master or Lord. Uh, L-O-R-D, all capital, as you've already known, uh, as we've talked in other times, is the the English rendering of the word Yahweh or Jehovah, which means supreme God. So that's what we get about the meaning of the name. Where do you find it in your Old Testament particularly? Well, that's a hard question to answer because over 300 different times is where you'll find it. There are so many ways in which you locate this name in Scripture. So God strung through his word, this great name of master, to describe himself just prolifically throughout the Bible. One place that that in my recent study appealed to me was Psalm 16.2, where David, writing in this psalm of intimate worship, says, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, Adonai. I have no good apart from you. Interesting. Adonai means master. Now, masters not only have authority over their slaves, over their servants, they also have responsibility over their servants. And I think David here is talking about the fact that since he made the God of Israel the master of his life, he had no good apart from God. God became his everything, and God supplied his everything, and he found most of that in the realm of private, intimate worship of God. Anyway, that's where I find it in a wonderful way in the Old Testament. New Testament-wise, the same image is carried with a name we're going to study later on, kurios in the Greek, which meant master and uh, owner of all power over a person. So that's many times attributed to Jesus. So that's the, that's the meaning of the word. That's the where you find it in your Bible. Last question today. Why does that matter to me in my new millennium world, in my present-day walk, with the God of the Bible. Well, I find that when I study this word, it reminds me of how God wants us to view him, how God wants us to view him, 
as opposed to how we want to view him. Today in our society, we've been raised in a self-oriented culture with a self-oriented mindset directed toward our needs, our vision, our dreams, our preferences, our wants. And we are reflexively designed by our old nature to believe that God exists to fulfill our needs, our desires, our wants, our dreams, our hopes, our preferences. And what happens as we enter into our faith with God is that we cast him in our terms. And a lot of times we see him as our servants instead of ourselves as his servants. Does that make sense? Well, if you understand what Adonai means, there's no possibility of that in the relationship you have with the God of the Bible. He comes as the master. You come as the servant. He is the one who gives himself the name master or Lord over your life over 300 times in his Old Testament. He's making a point. He comes and sets the terms for your relationship with him. You don't get to set the terms of your relationship with him. He comes, but there's good news. He's perfect. He's always good. He's always wise. He always has your best interests at heart so that whatever he as Adonai, master and Lord of your life, decrees it should happen in your life, you can know that it has a good purpose and it will have a glorious result, either now or in heaven. So we can trust this master. We can surrender everything to this master without fear. And we ought to surrender everything to him because Adonai desires to rule it all in our lives. And he deserves it and he should. We want to be servants that have accepted also whatever God ordains for our lives. He gets to set the kind of service we give him in ministry. He gets to set the events of our days. He gets to set our economic life. He gets to set our family tensions and challenges. He gets to set physical health over time and over life. He gets to set it all. And in the midst of it, he calls us to honor him as our master, no matter how we struggle in walking through what he's ordained for us. He is the master. Remember how God wants us to view him versus how we sometimes prefer to. I always need reminders of it because every day of my life comes packaged with things that I wouldn't have authored for myself. Today's no exception. So I want to ask you to do what I do periodically throughout the day. Spend a moment in prayer with me right now, resurrendering to Adonai, our great master. Would you bow with me? Father, we come and we want to remember, Lord, that we come to you on your terms. We don't come to you on ours. Repentance involves turning from life on our terms according to our goals and realizing how broken and sinful that is and turning around and coming under your lordship and your rulership. and You become our master. Father, help us today to surrender every part of our day to you, whatever you desire it to be, fulfilling or disappointing, difficult or rewarding. Lord, let us surrender it all in advance today and seek to honor your majesty through it. And Father, let us seek to be what I call the accepting servant. In other words, we accept whatever comes from your hand in terms of what you call us to do, what you call us to walk through, and how you choose to provide for us. Lord, there's contentment on the other side of that acceptance because Adonai, our master, is and always shall be good to us. We pray in your matchless name. Amen. Thanks for coming before him with me for another wonderful time in the Word. May Adonai lead you in a fulfilling walk today. I'll check in with you next week.